All right, so design and usability matter. If we take a look at these design tips, um, we really need to know who the user is and how they're going to be using the interface. We need to think about the operator and what they what they need to do. What's their role? How do they need to effectively uh, operate things on site? So if we think about the navigation, there are multiple different options for how you might do navigation. Does it make sense to use a bar that's across the top like this? Does it make sense to use side navigation? Uh, so you really want to think about multiple things. Um, um, you can use this as a checklist as well. So make sure you determine which page navigation pattern is going to work best for the users. If you have tabs, they should be intuitive. You want to make sure every screen or page has a unique name so folks can refer to those things. Uh, back buttons, breadcrumbs that might be across the top are definitely very helpful. Uh, and then the, when it says avoid drop down menus, that's talking about a right click because if you're designing something for mobile and you're designing things for a web browser, uh, you want to have the same design paradigms wherever you can. And web browsers don't have a right click uh, inside if they're running inside a mobile device. So you want to avoid the right click context menus wherever you can. Um, if it makes sense to just left click on something and pull up some context or do a tap. Um, you might do something like that. In addition to thinking about the navigation, you also want to use emphasis to draw attention to the most important info or objects. So if you take a look right down there, uh, you have emphasis on the red and the yellow where you know that there's something that's happening with Pump 2 that might be an issue. You want to remove the visual clutter wherever you can uh, and keep mobile screens really focused on the most essential functions. You want to include those levels of depth to provide context and make it touch friendly. And now I'm going to switch over to a demo, which I'm also going to fly through. This is the setup right here. Um, this Ignition server is already in place. This is what's running here locally on my system in my laptop. And you can see these different sets of tags. So I have plant tags, I have some refrigeration, I have accumulator levels, ambient temperature, discharge pressure. And I want this to be accessible centrally. I want to be able to see this from someone who's sitting at home. So what I've done is I've spun up an ignition gateway in the cloud and I've turned on encryption. That's um, all I've really done there. This is the designer for that. So I'll log in. I will set this up. So it's going through to, you know, I'm setting up a new project. This is, uh, as I said, 100% from scratch. I'm going to call this demo. I'm going to grab a project template in this case, a create new project. And as you'll see inside this designer, it doesn't have any tags or anything else. It's just a standard designer right here that is very simple. And if I go into my perspective screens, these are just the default pages that I might have for this. So welcome to perspective. It doesn't really say anything. And if I expand out my tags, um, down here, I'm not really seeing anything specific. I'm going to hit save on that um, and minimize this, and then I'll go to my configuration. So from this ignition server right there, I'm going to push some data up. So this is my ignition server. I'm going to send it up to that cloud system, and I'm going to do that simply. Uh, I can do that over the gateway network or MQTT. I'm doing the gateway network in this case. Set up an outgoing connection. I'm going to tell this I want to go to secure.ia.io, which is where that server is. I'm going to hit save right there. And then, of course, for security, we need to verify that that is good. So I'm just gone to secure.ia.io inside another web browser tab here. And I'm coming down to my gateway network communication. And I have an incoming connection request that's come from there. So I'll take a look at this. That certificate is good. I'm going to approve that certificate and say this is uh, someone I do want to actually let in and come into the system. And uh, then I will switch back to my main ignition gateway. And in fact, I don't need to switch back. It's just uh, set up that connection. And we can see that this is up and running. So uh, that connection is running from the other side there as well. And then I'm going to set it up so that I have access to those remote tags. So come down to real time tags create a new provider. I've got a remote gateway network here um, provider, and I can see that that's set up there. And I have multiple different providers. This one is the default, and I'll call this site. Come down here, create that provider, and then uh, going to real time, I can see that I have that in place. Now, if I come back to my ignition um, gateway, 
and I come to my providers here, and I load this up, they're all my tags. This is everything. This is streaming over the gateway network. This is coming from the site up to the central location. I have access to everything. I'll come in, I will drop uh, maybe my accumulator level on the screen, and I wanna see that in an LED display. Maybe I wanna pull in one of my tags, one of my F8 tags from this slick, and I wanna put it on the screen and show a tank right there. Um, it's going to subscribe, and then it has that tank information here. Um, and I wanna put some ambient humidity on the screen. Maybe I wanna tie this to even some of the history that's coming from that site that already exists at the site right there. Um, I could do all of that too. So if I pull up that history, um, I can show it um, inside, uh, let's say inside a standard chart or graph or something that's coming from the um, alarm configuration there. 